that weren't. Uh, and again, in this one, it seems like they are saying that there are no statistically significant differences. So that's what I wanted to explain, is that when in these studies they talk about statistically significant uh, uh, correlations, what they are going to find is statistically significant varies depending on the kind of study that you're doing. So the statistical significance that many uh, uh, researchers would require uh, to make them comfortable believing uh, prayer uh, had a beneficial effect or affected someone, particularly distance prayer, is going to be so high as to not be able to be met unless a, a very <laughs> over-the-top tangible miracle occurs. Uh, and this is the kind of approach that I think is not helpful in if you actually want to find out information about this. So, meta-analyses on all of these, taking a look at a bunch of these studies over the years, uh, 23 trials, uh, and this was done in uh, 2000. So, levels of evidence, uh, a review of these levels of evidence found some evidence for the hypothesis that being prayed for improves physical recovery from acute illness. A number of studies have tested this hypothesis. Only three have sufficient rigor for review here. Again, that rigor is what I'm talking to you about. The, their expectation of what uh, the appropriate rigor for a study of this nature is going to be very different from uh, the rigor that they would uh, expect on a study of you know the effects of aspirin or something like that um, which I believe is not a great approach when you're trying to study something like this uh, so in these studies the strongest findings were for the variables that were evaluated uh, most subjectively so this raises concerns about the possible inadvertent unmasking of the outcomes of assessors and uh, you know again it, in studies what you want to do as a researcher is avoid your own personal beliefs coming into uh, uh, this uh, study and that can be very difficult for a number of reasons on, on, on both sides of the issue whether you're really a strong believer in prayer or you are very skeptical uh, research has to try to uh, compensate for that so all in all what it looks like is more research needs to be done and it seems like there's a willingness to do that research but that prayer does have an effect especially on healing the whole thoughts and prayers issue I would say use thoughts and prayers positive energy if you will to try to move those who would block any discussion of or any pursuit of the kinds of protections in uh, the law against uh, weaponry and guns that many are calling for. I would say that if that is your desire, pray for those people as well. Because in praying for those people that you feel are, or others feel are, are standing in the way, you know, praying for members of the NRA, you begin to establish a certain empathy, 
but you also establish an energetic connection and that can help change my might not see that might feel that they're being attacked or might feel threatened by such discussions. Prayer can help them to feel better about that and more accepting. So that's where your thoughts and prayers could really come in handy. And of course, I'm not saying thoughts and prayers alone. I, I believe there's a there's a, a quote in the Bible that uh, you know says that uh, faith without works is meaningless. And that's true. So, you know, thoughts and prayers without good works can seem meaningless. But what we now know from science is that thoughts and prayers do work on a different level and can help. And it's just important to remember that. So this week, I'm going to have to skip our regular meditation. Uh, and I apologize for that. We're just running short on time. Uh, but next week, I'll tell you what. Next week, we'll give you two for the price of one. How about that? So until then, have a positive, thoughtful and if you so choose prayerful week. See you next time.